Hello friends today's story is an exciting novel and it contains lessons that may be useful to you in your life. I leave you now with a princess and a gentleman shepherd. The story of the princess and the shepherd that took place in this village begins. There was once a king who had a beautiful daughter. When it was time for her to get a husband, the king set a day and invited all the neighboring princes to come and see her. One of these princes decided that he would like to have a look at the princess before the others. So he dressed himself in a shepherd's costume, a broad brimmed hat, a blue smock, a green vest, tight breeches to the knees, thick woolen stockings, and sandals. Thus disguised he set out for the kingdom where the princess lived. All he took with him were four loaves of bread to eat on the way. He hadn't gone far before he met a beggar who begged him, in God's name, for a piece of bread. The prince at once gave him one of the four loaves. A little farther on a second beggar held out his hand and begged for a piece of bread. To him the prince gave the second loaf. To a third beggar he gave the third loaf, and to a fourth beggar the last loaf. The fourth beggar said to him, Prince and shepherd's guise, your charity will not go unrewarded. Here are four gifts for you, one for each of the loaves of bread that you have given away this day. Take this whip which has the power of killing anyone it strikes however gentle the blow. Take this beggar's wallet. It has in it some bread and cheese, but not common bread and cheese for, no matter how much of it you eat, there will always be some left. Take this shepherd's axe. If ever you have to leave your sheep alone, plant it in the earth and the sheep, instead of string, will graze around it. Last, here is a shepherd's pipe. When you blow upon it your sheep will dance and play. Farewell and good luck go with you. The prince thanked the beggar for his gifts, and then trudged on to the kingdom where the beautiful princess lived. He presented himself at the palace as a shepherd in quest of work, and he told them his name was Yang. The king liked his appearance, and so the next day he was put in charge of a flock of sheep which he drove up the mountainside to pasture. He planted his shepherd's axe in the midst of a meadow and, leaving his sheep to graze about it, he went off into the forest hunting adventures. There he came upon a castle, where a giant was busy cooking his dinner in a big saucepan. Good day to you, Yan said politely. The giant, who was a rude, unmannerly fellow, bellowed out, It won't take me long to finish you, you young whippersnapper. He raised a great iron club to strike Yan, but Yan, quick as thought, flicked the giant with his whip and the huge fellow toppled over dead. The next day he returned to the castle and found another giant in possession. Ho, ho. He roared on sight of Yan. What, you young whippersnapper, back again. You killed my brother yesterday and now I'll kill you. He raised his great iron club to strike Yan, but Yan skipped nimbly aside. Then he flicked the giant with his whip and the huge fellow toppled over dead. When Yan returned to the castle the third day there were no more giants about. So he wandered from room to room to see what treasures were there. In one room he found a big chest. He struck it smartly and immediately two burly men jumped out and, bowing low before him, said, What does the master of the castle desire? Show me everything there is to be seen, Yan ordered. So the two servants of the chest showed him everything, jewels and treasures and gold. Then they led him out into the gardens, where the most wonderful flowers in the world were blooming. Yan plucked some of these and made them into a nosege. That afternoon, as he drove home his sheep, he played on his magic pipe and the sheep, pairing off two by two, began to dance and frisk about him. All the people in the village ran out to see the strange sight and laughed and clapped their hands for joy. The princess ran to the palace window and when she saw the sheep dancing two by two she, too, laughed and clapped her hands. Then the wind whiffed her a smell of the wonderful nosege that Yan was carrying and she said to her serving maid, Run down to the shepherd and tell him the princess desires his nosege. The serving maid delivered the message to Yang, but he shook his head and said, Tell your mistress that whoever wants this nosege must come herself and say, Vinichko, give me that nosege. When the princess heard this, she laughed and said, What a nod, shepherd. I see I must go myself. So the princess herself came out to Yan and said, Vinichko, give me that nosege. We will postpone your enjoyment until the next episode with the continuation of the story of the princess and the shepherd, in the hope that I will deliver to you my friends a lot of respect.